Hello and welcome to the Kundalini Podcast. That was Zen. This is Tao. I'm Vivek Govic. This is episode 98. Today I'm going to talk about gratitude. The same subject that I mentioned in the previous episode. But here's how I am going to explain it further in more detail. Using a book that I have mentioned in the past, in the past videos. It's called The Secret. It's about manifesting using the law of attraction and how to do it right. And I've talked about how to do it in the present tense. Imagining your imagination, visualization is going to be extremely helpful to you. And I would like to add on that method of visualization. Now, this is going to veer into a lot of things that you were asked not to do as a child. Daydream. Oh, you're always in your thoughts. Oh, get your focus back into your books and do your math homework. Right? I'm going to ask you to do the exact opposite, which is allow your mind to daydream like a child again. And I've mentioned this briefly in a previous video where kids, when they're like, I'm on a ship and I'm the captain and somebody else is the first mate and these are my sailors and we are trying to navigate a stormy sea. They imagine all of this like they're there. So that daydream needs to be brought back into our mindset. It's not just about those who are, who are like children who will go to heaven. That's the uh, line from the Bible. And I was explaining that, giving this example about kids and how quickly they forget. It's not just useful for that. It's not just useful that your child like and go into heaven. It is also useful that you let go of your current reality. Even though I say stay in the present moment. Yeah, knowing that you're in the present moment, letting your mind wander into an, a fascinating world of imagination. Think of it this, this way. Your limited imagination brings about negative patterns. But your unlimited imagination can say, hey, anything is possible. Fundamentally, what are these negative thoughts trying to tell you? Each one of them is saying, this is not possible or something is more limited. All you have to do is dream beyond that, at least in your mind, and think of the biggest possibilities. Imagine it. There, you broken out of the box and become more cosmic, more infinite, attached to something given to us, our faculties of imagination. And how to put that to good use? For your own benefit, not just putting away negative thoughts, not just not dwelling on negativity and how to avoid that, but how to use your mind to its fullest potential, to its best capacity to imagine a better outcome. Now knowing that this is not just imagination, this is a building up of your visualization technique. And that will manifest in your life through your actions. And only those kind of actions, those kind of ideas, thoughts, people, events will be drawn to you. So for that, an important point that I would like to make came as a revelation after I made my other video. And I've been thinking about it today, so I thought I'd express it. That is, you are never given things in a sequence, even though they say in the secret, in the secret, examples of what people receive. It's deceptive to think that this happens on a compressed timeline as you wish. And that's where most people falter. Okay, fine. You have decided to remove all negative thoughts. You have managed to do that. You've kept an even keel mind. You have great equanimity. You put positive thoughts. You have done your visualization. Now, expectation and ego still creep in when you start thinking about the results. I wished all of this, but it didn't happen. Instead of just focusing on the task, because of wishing all of this and acting on it, I have these tasks that I do every day as a practice, as a routine. Layering up of a productive output in that direction. Say, I want to be a photographer. I want to sell my art. Well, I have to go and take pictures every day. Have you done that? Instead of focusing on that and the skill, when you start, your expectations start gnawing at you. Okay, it is a failure of one of these methods. You've allowed negative thoughts within you. You let them take root. And now it has become a gnawing sensation of expectation and want. And that has to be dropped. Oh, mindfulness made me aware of that. Great. So remember that whatever you ask for doesn't happen right away. And here's a trick that fate plays with you. If this is not done on a day-to-day -day basis, being exactly true to who you are, asking for the right things, keeping your mind clear, not being duplicitous or deceitful even to your own self is giving up expectations and only working on the outcome but visualizing the best 
with your imagination and knowing that it will not come in sequence. What I asked for as a high school student came true when I was 40, in my 40s, let's say. And because of the spiritual awakening today, I'm in a position to enjoy that. Oh, remember I asked for that? I got it now. Instead of saying, ah, oh, my reality immediately before this incident was different and more comfortable. Why am I getting this and only comparing it to that past or what other people are doing will keep me from seeing the blessing, which is, oh, I asked for exactly this at 14. Okay. I'm glad it came true. But this is, is this what I want today? And yes, that past incident from where I came from just before this is still pretty harsh and you know, I'm still recovering from it. So what do I ask for next? Oh, this blessing has been given to me because of something I asked before and that's why this is in my life. I'm complaining or thinking of complaining because this is not what I expected based on my past reality. But I found the blessing in it through mindfulness, through gratitude. Then I ask myself, do I need this? And realize how important it is that I ask the right way for the next step that comes into my life. And that is completely under my control. And then not falling into the same traps of expectation of still letting negative thoughts in now because you've do, done all this work, you feel you deserve something and that's not in your life. Keeping all of those thoughts aside and unshakably following a certain method without sabotaging yourself, starts becoming second nature, the more you do this. So I hope people are understanding what I'm saying. The law of attraction works, but your expectations are still a ripple in the pond that has to be observed and let go. Otherwise, it will mess up with the law of attraction, affirmation, visualization process. So you wished for it. And now, as if there is a timer or a countdown, you start expecting stuff because you haven't done the mental work to remove that aspect of you or mindfully observe it as part of a functioning thinking apparatus. You don't have to latch on to it. That another step of witnessing has not been done. Once you do that and still with every morning with gratitude, with a mind filled with positivity, cleansed of the past, don't even bring these kind of thoughts of expectation based on how much you have put in, how much effort you have put in, that whole framework of thinking should be gone and you should be visualizing great outcomes with your imagination. That's the point. Then it works. But thought it necessary or thought it relevant to at least point out that one of the pitfalls, an esoteric one at a high level one, but you can correct it even at a lower level of understanding of mindfulness or meditation and the mechanics of your mind and how to make it work on your behalf. One thing that might be missed out by people that they can correct right now is this. To not compare yourself. To see the blessing in everything and then not compare it to the immediate past, but to something you asked for and see the blessing that you're receiving today. It could be the smallest thing. It could be all of it. <laughs> Maybe I watched Baywatch. Now I'm on the beach where it was shot. Who knows? But it's a familiar, positive outcome and I have to see the blessing in it. Not be bogged down by what I wished for yesterday based on what was the year before. 14 and 47, there's a large age difference. <laughs> and what's right at 47, moving from this point onwards, as myself, as an awakened being, as somebody who got out of a tough relationship, and other barriers broke away, moving out of a nine to five lifestyle of uh, being in a certain rat race, moving more towards creative productivity and uh, expressing the thoughts and ideas that have come as a result of an awakening, a blessing I received unexpectedly. More you realize the power of your own mind in bringing things into your life, these mechanics become obvious. Hey, this is not going to happen right away. Hey, this is not going to happen the right way if you ask in the future tense or past tense or with craving. And don't expect a result or even create some pattern and chain of expecting a result. That is part of our older mechanism where you do this for me. Your mom says, you do these chores and I'll give you this reward. Here's your allowance. You do these chores, you'll get this reward. 
so in the ma- matters of the heart the spirit your personal evolution and manifesting things through thought focused in the right way there is no room for that kind of give and take that satisfaction has to be derived not from a timely reward that you received for the amount of positive stuff you have put in the reward is that you put that stuff in in and of itself that is the reward why because a lot of people who don't know the power of the mind are busy putting negative thoughts in their mind busy sabotaging themselves to statements like ah oh, i could never do this or oh if i it was me that would some bad outcome be it's a visualization so if you can do, stop yourself from doing 10 bad visualizations a day right there that is success don't expect any other reward that will accumulate and come later at the pace that the universe wants it you just have to remove the roadblocks that you are putting in so 10 negative statements like that avoid a day 10 opinions of other people that were conflicting with your own assuredness oh i know this for a fact because i've done my research and this is where i'm going to go made shaky by other people's differing opinions they are not you they are not looking out for your best interest some might be but they haven't done the same calculations that you have trust your own gut instinct over anybody else's opinion to have the assurance to do that to act on something on a daily basis through whatever other problems you might be going through to keep persistence resilience and joy and enthusiasm and not taking the negative in is by itself a reward from where would your life would have gone had you continued on that path of negativity so see it that way and don't look for that pat on the back or reward given on a regular basis like happens in the outside world that you might be used to but know that that outcome that you're thinking about visualizing in the best possible way is coming you rushing that process and being in a hurry being impatient to be rewarded might set up another negative pattern which you had so worked so hard to eliminate all negativity was gone and now after you have done the good work this is rearing its ugly head again and now you have to deal with it again it's okay we all do have to do these mental mechanics but expecting an outcome too soon or being frustrated by it is also an emotion that the universe picks up and it's also under your control and it's also strengthened through the muscle memory of doing mindfulness and meditation i hope you found this helpful this is vivek gobeka signing off peace love blessings please like subscribe comment 